Hi, welcome back to another video. I am so excited. I have a special guest today. This is my colleague Anurag and he is a product designer on the Uber design team based in Bangalore in India. Uh, I'm Anurag. I'm an emerging markets designer uh, in the Bangalore office in India for Uber. Uh, I've been in, with Uber for two and a half years now and most of the time I've spent uh, in Uber is about uh, kind of designing for emerging markets. Uh, some of the recent things that I've done are Uber Lite, uh, which is like a smaller, faster and most importantly a simpler app to request an Uber. And apart from that, I'm also working on Uberbus, which is a micro bus service that we recently piloted in uh, Cairo, Egypt. Before Uber, I was working with Twitter and there also I worked at, on Twitter Lite. Apart from my, uh, you know, design, I also uh, kind of spend a lot of time on food. Uh, most of my weekends are actually spending uh, kind of trying to be a home cook and, uh, you know, feeding people. Uh, you should and follow creating. his Instagram. The photos are amazing. Oh, yeah. I love more followers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you always been... Like, did you always consider yourself a designer for emerging markets or is it just something you kind of fell into or how did that kind of come about? Because you did the light app for both Twitter and now Uber. So is that like something intentional or? No, no, not at all. I, I don't think that I have. It just like, like you said, this fell uh, on me, to be honest, I would say. Uh, when I joined Twitter, I think uh, we joined the India team. And India team, I think the focus was actually just looking at bringing new uh, people to the, uh, you know, Twitter app. And I think one of the thing was actually Twitter Lite. Uh, and when I joined Uber, I think because we are situated in India, uh, mm -hmm. I think most of companies kind of like want us to think about emerging markets because we kind of understand it well. Yeah, you're, in, a, you're yeah, living and breathing it. You are in the market yeah. and also, uh, you know, when you're thinking about these emerging market pro problems, it's like more synonymous with a lot of other markets which are similar. For example, uh, some of the problems that I see in India are also there uh, in Brazil or, uh, you right. know, Mexico. So yeah. I think that expertise kind of helps. And um, when I joined Uber, I think we were... I ended up solving very, very similar problems. And Overlight, of course, I think uh, I did not imagine that I would be making or like working on <laughs> another app. But yeah. yeah, I think it happened. So it was cool. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what Uber Lite is? Because for a lot of users, we're very used to the regular Uber app. You know, you see all the fancy designs, yeah. the map and everything. So for people who don't know or aren't familiar with Lite apps, yeah, can you tell sure. us more about what it is? I mean, uh, the way I would define Uber Lite is like, uh, Uber Lite is like a medium of request, like another medium of requesting Uber. It's, uh, you know, a faster, smaller, but I think to me, most importantly, like a simpler uh, way of requesting an Uber. It's right. it's an app that we have launched on Android. Uh, and I think we recently launched it in uh, India, Mexico, uh, Brazil, and a lot of other countries as well. To your question, I think for me, Lite is just like a way the way I think about light is like a way of uh, a simpler way of accessing a product. It's more like mm. thinking about if someone is just wanting to use technology, the technology should not be a barrier uh, for them to actually right. be able to use our product. So I think that's how I think about, uh, you know, more accessible light apps and yeah. not just like I think engineering always tr tries to define it as smaller and faster. But I think the bigger one is always like simpler and ability to make actually make it uh, make people understand. To me, I always feel like uh, an ability to sort of respect your users and not make your users feel dumb. You know what I mean? Like, like it's like they are just trying to get their job done and they shouldn't have to like learn, uh, you know, so many constructs that I think we take for granted to be actually able to just use a simple service to get something. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like not everybody understands as much as we do how like certain interaction patterns work and like yeah. The hamburger menu, for example, like yeah, yeah, yeah. to you and I, it's ubiquitous. But if you put that in front of someone, I don't know, in Cairo, maybe it's not as. Yeah, I mean, more than hamburger menu, I would say like when you, and when I'm thinking about an Uber construct. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember we were doing research in uh, Brazil and Mexico, mm -hmm. and I would go up to users and I'll be like, uh, try requesting an Uber from our regular app. And sometimes they'll be like, and I'll ask them, uh, what do you think is a bank around? Which is a map which all of us understand. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh, that's a map of my city. Uh, and they won't know that we are actually trying to give them their exact uh, location and right. like giving them an option to actually edit where the car needs to come. They they really don't get it. They yeah. Maps is something they've not grown up with. So yeah. I think uh, that's something which makes a huge difference, mm -hmm. I guess. And what is the most 
challenging part about designing a light app? I mean, you worked on, how long did this take you actually? You worked on it for a good year or so, I think. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I would say like, if you just have to think about the design process alone, I mm -hmm. would say it'll be six months, but I think design process doesn't end there. It's actually like sure. making it really, uh, you know, uh, all, all that you imagine actually making it into the real app, yeah. I guess. So I would say almost like a year of design process, yeah. how I put it. Yeah. Um, to your question of most challenging, if I have to think about, I think most challenging one is really about to think about is being really super open. It's mm -hmm. like when I'm going to a market, there are so many things that I, I take for granted. I think ability to unlearn and just be open and see, uh, you know what, like uh, I always thought like something like map or even typing for that matter. You know, map is of course like a more obvious one that people might not understand. Mm -hmm. But like I could also see that people are not comfortable typing or the phones are so small. I mean, I'm using an iPhone all the time. Yeah. And I won't imagine that, uh, you know, someone uh, who's watching Wanting to use an Uber uh, in uh, you know uh, Salvador in Brazil right. uh, is it has like a really small phone and really bad network and I think just being open to that and saying that you know what the world is super different I think that's a definitely a difficult one yeah. the second difficult one to me would be just like convincing your team and everyone uh, that. Uh, it, if, if a redesign is required or if a rethought of an experience is required just right. ability to convince and bring everyone on board that it's required and that's the only way to really solve it you know yeah. so I think those would, would be the two so you did a lot of research for this project yeah. you went to Brazil mm -hmm. Mexico uh, you know Uber has a lot of resources to help invest in, in research we have dedicated user researchers we often yeah. have budget to travel to these places um, what advice would you give for somebody watching who maybe doesn't have as much resources available to them? Maybe yeah. they don't have researchers or, or budget to like fly to these locations yeah, all the yeah, time. Yeah. What advice would you give to that person? How could they still get those research insights mm -hmm. without going on the ground? Yeah, you're really giving me a tough one. <laughs> I mean, I am super lucky, first of all, uh, to be in a place where we are, we like Uber I definitely is a place where uh, I think we can do more than many other companies yeah. and the fact that we have budgets to actually like you already mentioned to be actually be able to go in that environment yeah. uh, and learn from these users pay these users be in their house yes. even eating their cake sometimes yeah. you know what I mean <laughs> uh, but I don't think that is the only way I mean mm -hmm. the most I learned from my research was actually learned from intercept sessions where we didn't pay anyone anything you just walk on the street and ask people uh, okay. you know what like would you be comfortable uh, in talking to me about Uber uh, and if they say yes which which is not going to happen too many times time. but it's okay like there'll be few people who'll agree and you'll get the best insights out of it because they don't have anything to be honest like they're not getting anything out of it and I think those are the best insights so just mm -hmm. go out and be closest closer to your users as much as you can is yeah. How I put it. yeah yeah and I think also there's um, increasingly more ways to do this online as well like yeah. While sometimes we do fly to those locations, sometimes we don't and we'll actually do the, we'll do interviews or um, sort of user research studies remotely. Like yeah, we'll totally. dial in or have conversations with them or maybe we'll do surveys or totally, yeah. maybe there's someone on the ground there that we can use as a contact who can do it for us. Uh, so yeah, you don't always have to actually yeah, totally. do totally. Yeah, not, not always. Yeah. yeah. Uberlight was obviously a big project. Yes. Uh, how do you manage stakeholder expectations? Often, you know, I hear from my product managers that they want things now or as soon as possible. Or they're asking like, where's the designs? Uh, how do you manage those expectations from a design perspective? No, I think this is a brilliant question. And I think I love answering this the most. <laughs> <Go> <laughs> for it. To be honest, uh, I think that's closest to me, I guess. Uh, that's something I've learned while uh, this journey uh, yeah. of Uberlight, I think is definitely like, uh, make everyone understand what a design process is. I think a lot of people look at designers as these artists who just go out and, uh, you know, make come back. Make pretty pictures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe come back with design and be like, yeah, these are visionaries who don't yeah. have a timeline. I think that's just a wrong perspective of looking at it. Everyone else in the company have strong timelines and they know their process really well. And I think for me, it's always like, making like clearer expectations mm -hmm. with the team is a super important thing mm -hmm. to making them understand what you do and I think there's always more empathy yeah. uh, to the whole process and I think the third one would be just say no as much as you can I think uh, people people think that maybe there is everyone is trying to pressure you to deliver quickly but if you say no and like they they don't have any other option. <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> I, the answer is no. <laughs> yeah, you it, it just comes, to, comes down to that if it's taking more time if you don't have clarity yourself 
don't try to deliver anything to anyone just hold on till you have clarity you have confidence uh, you have tested it with the users and your mm. users are happy with uh, what you're trying to do until then i mean don't show anything to them i mean yes you show something to them <laughs> uh, but uh, get, like t- tell them how you're thinking mm. so that they feel part of the process but say no this is not the delivery don't like act on it yeah. Are you saying, yeah something that i like to do as well as i try to upfront uh set expectations and like design timelines yeah. so that kind of helps them to get a sense of when they can expect yeah. you to yeah, be yeah. ready at certain stages or then at least they kind of know what you're focusing on right now or like at what stage of the design process you're in uh, and that can kind of help maybe re- reduce the amount of questions yeah. that you're getting from some I mean, you said it there you know what like timeline i think is is actually the biggest learning if yeah. i have to put it in one sentence it's just like control your timeline yeah. like like really have a timeline and adhere to it whatever it takes and once you're there you will build the trust to be honest yeah and that's important that's important so designing for unfamiliar contexts can be pretty challenging yes. right um i've worked on some projects where i've had to design experiences for mexico and brazil and i'm not mexican i'm not brazilian i'm not even from latin america so uh, it can be really challenging to put yourself in the shoes of of the people yeah. in that market uh do you have any strategies to recommend of how people could could do that sort of understand better the context that they're designing for you know i think that that was something i was uh, and i and we as like a team uh, were facing so much mm-hmm. uh, you know like we we went to this market we don't know uh, how to explain everyone else who was not in this market that you know this is how the users are uh, like right you know uh, you yeah. can publish as many reports as you can but if they are not there yeah. like they might not understand so yeah. i think to me i think i used this one strategy i would say uh, i just created this one persona to me i met this user called maria uh, in uh, sao paulo mm-hmm. in brazil and she was a baker and uh, you know she wanted to use uber and she used uber but she was asking her daughter to request for her she did not know how to use our app yeah. and she just wanted to deliver breads and sometimes she would miss on that because her daughter is not free uh-huh. so for me maria was like all that i learned i all that i wanted to learn from this market and i just thought you know what this is something that's symbolic of mobility and symbolic of freedom to me and i just took that story and brought it back uh to india and to everyone and i just said like you know what this is this user and i spent a lot of time making everyone understand uh who maria is and what are her challenges and i think because it was just one persona mm-hmm. and i'm sure like i i took some of the bits from other yeah, personas yeah there's probably many right exactly yeah. but you just like condense it into one yeah. uh, so that people could adhere to and understand and could relate to to yeah. be honest and every time uh, you are having i don't know if an engineer is saying you know i can't make this because it's so much effort you'll be like you know what you, you know about maria and it's not going to work for maria you know what i mean <laughs> think so, about maria maria needs to uh, be able to use it <laughs> yeah totally and i think everyone just uh, every product has a maria and i think uh, that's super important in yeah. my view i guess Yeah, I think that's awesome feedback. And sometimes like I can get overwhelmed with the amount of personas and then like trying to decide like oh, but I need to be able to support this for this persona mm-hmm. and this for this persona. But I love your idea of just condensing it down yeah. into one very strong persona and naming naming yeah. them uh to have it be super clear that everyone can get on board, everybody understands and has the yeah. same vision of who we're bu- building and designing this yeah, for. Yeah, totally, totally. So Uber Lite is a standalone app yes. that is quite different from the regular Uber app. Uh what are the sort of main design decisions that you made in that app and why did you make those decisions? I mean, there are many design decisions I would say are super different from how I generally think about apps or how I generally design. Few of that my on my top of my mind I would say the biggest one is actually just going mapless right and uh, so if if any of you uh, you know have a chance to actually look at an uber life flow you will see you won't see maps at all and i think that no was maps. A, yeah that was that's a bigger so one that's so brave i mean y- y- and i don't think uber is like this uh, first app of started a generation of mobility applications which are just centered about maps yeah. but i think for us it was just like we saw our map, users are not getting it at all and yeah. our thing was to just get rid of it and i think it was not an easy one I I think we spent a lot of time understanding what are the alternate ways of surfacing the same information. Mm-hmm. Two I think we didn't completely get rid of maps. You it's still a tap away, but if you are someone okay. who don't understand, it's not showing like front and center when you Yeah, and I think looking at early da- data as well, there are you know a lot of people who are not using maps at all and they are able to get it right. So I think that was a bigger one. 
Um, I think the other one I would have to say is uh, points of interest. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, one of the things Uber Lite, uh, what's different in Uber Lite is we start with pickup because I think in all these markets, uh, GPS is a real problem. And uh, I think like when you're trying to request an Uber, where your card comes makes a huge difference to your experience. Yes. So I think we just start with uh, pickup and we ask where do you want to get picked up? And when you, to answer that question, the options are actually your current location, but also just landmarks around you. And I, I think that's how humans kind of understand a place which they're not familiar with. They can just look at a landmark and they could be like, oh yeah, you know what, I know about this. And yeah, like I'm by the subway or I'm by the McDonald's. Or, yeah, 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 totally, totally. And one other super nice one that uh, you shared with me recently was the uh, the highlight of the notification. Totally. Yeah, do you want to share a bit about that? I mean, yeah, I think that's an interesting one. To me, it just came out. I think it's an, it's important to have fun in the yeah. design process. This was never the part of the plan. I think one day we're just looking at notifications and you're like, you know what, like Uber, notification is an important one to react on you know what I yeah. mean it's not like that text that you got from someone and you're like trying to ignore someone liked your comment or yeah I know or you're trying to ignore <laughs> someone I mean notifications just get lost in the sea of that tray you know you know what I mean mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and and here I'm like someone some real person is waiting outside it's like if your car is has yeah. arrived it's someone who's real someone's there <laughs> yeah and I think for us it was just like thinking notifications from ground up and we just looked at Android and I think Android gives you so much you can play with flexibility yeah and I think uh, uh, we came up with this new uh, pattern of notifications. We just changed the color of the notification altogether. We made it bolder. So, I mean, one of the things I say is like, even if you're looking at cinnamon buns on Instagram, like this notification, this uh, like dark blue thing that comes on your screen, I think you will, uh, you will notice it. You'll yeah. notice it. Yeah, yeah you can't miss it. You can't miss it. Don't, don't, definitely. I, I mean, that's what I want. <laughs> Okay, well, that's all we have time for in this video today. I mean, Uber Light, you did such amazing work on that. And I know that it wasn't just you that yeah, yeah. that app, right? So many people. I mean, I, I, I definitely a shout out to the design team, uh, Sri Jalasutram, mm -hmm. uh, who sits out of San Francisco. I think uh, I, and, uh, I and him kind of like were the first designers. And then uh, Neither Zameel, who also joined mm -hmm. us uh, in Bangalore. So we were like a three member design team, but definitely not a three member design team, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's like, Everyone else in this, in the Bangalore team, like yeah. the product managers, the engineers, I think everyone was involved in designing Uber Light. And I, I think one of the things was like simple was one of the principles we took. So mm -hmm. everyone always challenged us on simply, simplicity and I think that really worked. That's so awesome. Yeah, shout out to everyone. Yeah, shout out to everybody. And so cool how everybody was so on board with the principles. It makes such a difference working together. Totally. Yeah, it made a lot of sense. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for being on my YouTube channel. Where can people go to find you online? You can check out my food stuff on Instagram. Yes. Maybe you could link it. I will link it. Okay. Well. And uh, I have a Twitter. Yes. Well. yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll be back soon with a new video. And if there's any other designers that you'd love to see on this channel, then please let me know and I'll do my best to chat with them. Cool. And so subscribe to Fabulous <laughs> Bye. Bye.